Meet Michael. This ambitious 22-year-old has dreams of traveling through Europe on foot, discovering underserved communities, and creating an app that, like, totally changes the world. No, that's not you. You're not Michael. Sorry, my bad. Um, let's see, hold on a second. I'll fire my assistant. Ah, yes, of course. Your name would be Jonathan? Thank you very much. He wants to get his personal highest score on Flappy Bird. Oh, dear God. Jonathan, meet Kristen. She is a winner. Kristen, Jonathan. He is a... Uh, Jonathan. Now, both of you should be paying attention to your econ teacher. But since you are not, I am here to help. So forget about class for the moment. Forget about charts and graphs. Forget about supply and demand. Let's talk supply and dance, man. Oh, and woman, of course. Go on, keep walking. Never mind all those beautiful people with camera equipment. Congratulations, you now both own stores. Let's see what you can sell. Might work. Maybe not. You tried, but wait. There you go, Kristen. in your store. But maybe you do. And a few extra bucks for your extra effort? That's not such a bad deal, is it? Double yeah. But both of you could have made a few more bucks if you had more canes. Are you going to let that happen again? My suggestion? Order more. With the demand so high, looks like Kristen can squeeze out a few more bucks. Two can play at that game. Wonderful. People are loving the canes. Remember earlier when I said to forget about charts and graphs? I lied. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Not you guys. What you are seeing is how price is directly related to the quantity supplied from the shop owner's point of view. The higher the price, the more the shop owner is willing to supply higher quantities because it's worth it. People are buying and making money. All is good. This is called the supply curve. Unpause. But you see, at some point, if your price gets too high, your customers may not be able to afford it. And with your high quantity of supply, you may end up with a surplus. Now what are you going to do? Oh, great. You're just going to give up. Live your life with a store full of unsold canes. Lower price, but that's better than no sale, right? Oh, this should clear out some supply for you. Kristen, what are you doing? Undercutting your competitor. I like it. Here we go again.
There you go. Canes are flying off the shelves. So much so, you need to order more. Pause. What you were seeing here is the demand curve, and it's from the customer's point of view. The higher the price, the lower the demand because it's less affordable. But when a price is lowered, like a sale, demand goes up. This is called the demand curve. Now, when you place the shop owner's supply curve on the customer's demand curve, you see they move in opposite directions. Customers want to spend less, shop owners want you to spend more. But there is a point where a shop owner and customer's interests meet. This is where the two curves intersect. It's where the supply perfectly matches the amount of demand. Demand. This is called equilibrium, and it's beautiful. Ah, you haven't heard a word I've been saying, have you? Wait, wait, that wasn't supposed to close yet. Uh, Jonathan, Kristen, excuse me, uh, where did you... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what have I done? Well, at least we learned something about market forces and supply and demand, and the hell am I talking about? Just cut it, cut. We're done here. Somebody give me a drink. <laughs>